What's up everyone, Dane here, bringing you guys another super 73 video. Today, I am gonna do a quick little walkthrough of painting the rear fender of my new Super 73 S2. I got the Hudson Blue. To me, one of the uh, cheapest items on the bike, just based on the plastic material, was the fenders, the front and back fender. Specifically, that back fender that you guys see pictured here. So anyways, I'm gonna just show you guys how we just quickly pop this off. It's simple, we just got four bolts that we gotta remove. We're gonna spray it. I'm gonna let you guys decide how it is you wanna paint your plastic fender. I don't think you can really make any mistakes or go wrong. It's something you could probably paint a hundred times. I'm gonna try it out with a random color. I think we're gonna go with something metallic, but I got my paint cabinet behind me here, so let me show you guys what I'm gonna do. All right, so I got my paint cabinet here. Uh, these are where I keep all my spray paints up top. On the right, I got all my colors. On the left are more of the uh, specialty paints, for instance, frosted glass. Gotta always have your glow in the dark spray paint. That's pretty awesome. A lot of different things you can do with that, and it really does work. But what we're gonna use today, we are gonna go with a Rust Oleum product. Let you guys check that out. Uh, we are gonna go with the Pure Gold. Um, I've got a color scheme picked out for my bike that I wanna work with. I'm not gonna share that just yet, but I think this might be close to one of those colors. But again, like I said, it doesn't matter because if I spray this on my back fender, I don't like it, I can quickly replace it, change it up with another spray paint. I got the one that has the paint and the primer. I think that's really important to make sure you get the paint and the primer. So let's get started with the disassembly and get this video rolling. All right, so what we got here, we got my Hudson Blue S2. One of my last videos I did, I swapped out the seat. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, check out that card up here on the uh, top right of your screen and check out the video on how to replace that. We are talking about this back fender here. This is what we're gonna paint. We are not gonna touch the uh, front fender that you see. I'm actually thinking of just removing that completely for the time being. Uh, the front tire I've noticed does not really do uh, much in terms with that fender of protecting me from getting wet regardless. I'm gonna spray this one, and I'm hoping that there's a new fender that comes out pretty soon to replace this one. Maybe somebody out there can do a 3D print of one of these. Just get us a little bit of a stronger plastic, maybe something slightly larger. We got uh, two bolts here, and then we got the bolts that are part of these brackets that are holding it up. I plan to actually, these are plastic brackets as well. I am not gonna paint those, I'm gonna leave these black. So I just gotta remove these two bolts here, one bolt here, one on the other side, that way we can pop this off and get started. I got here's my number three. So what I plan to do is just stick the Allen, get that positioned right in there so I can hold it in place inside of that bolt. So I got that secured in there. Now. So we got our fender here. It's a little bit dirty, but that's okay because our next step has to do with using sandpaper. Give me one second while I grab some of that sandpaper. All right, so what I got here is, we'll go over a little bit of sanding. So I got a lot of different sandpapers here. And if you're not familiar with sandpaper, it comes in different grits or uh, we'll call it levels. The lower the number, the more coarse and rough that the edges are gonna be, and it's gonna give you a rougher look with whatever it is you're sanding. For instance, right here, this is actually a 36. Very coarse, 
Then you can take it a step, well, I won't even show you this one just yet, but we got a 180 here. And if you see, it's somewhat smoother. And uh, I'll, I'll just throw these all to the side for the time being. You can get sandpaper and looks like this where it's a sheet and you can apply those to different tools usually. And you got a couple other styles here. Uh, this will usually come with uh, car kits when you're doing uh, some painting and some refinishing. Uh, I like them because you can actually stick them to this uh, sponge type tool and you can just use it like that. You also have a block style, which this is probably my favorite. Uh, you can buy these in a lot of different grits. This one actually happens to be a 180. And if you have a, if you have this kind of stuff laying around your garage, your house, whatever it is, and you don't have it in nice packaging that's telling you, oh, you got the 80 grit right here, or you got your, what is it, 120 grit right here, that's okay. Because on the back of these sheets that are inside, you're always going to have a number. Same thing. Like, for instance, on this brick here, you can see how that says 180. I love this style. They're easy to grip. You get a good motion going. I really like this style. We're going to be using this on plastic. We want to use a really, really fine sandpaper. And when I say fine, I'm talking 220 and higher. Maybe 220 to 600. And that's personal preference. I really don't care too much about this. This is some cheap, flimsy plastic, and I was already telling you, I don't even know if I'm gonna like the color that I end up spraying on this. Let's just start with, let's see what we got here that would work good. We got our 120. We've got 220, which is always nice. That is gonna be my last resort, and I just so happen here, I got a couple sheets of 320. So I think 320, let me see what I got on here. I actually, oh, we got 320. A little scuffed up from already using it, but that's all right. This will actually make it easy to uh, use on the surface since there's a little bit of give here. I've got to get my hands all worked up. So I already mentioned it was a little bit dirty. That's okay because I'm going to be doing the sanding. Uh, let's just start. We're going to do a light sand so you can see it here. And watch this. You can see the little marks it makes. I mean, partially you're seeing that because of the white that's on here already, but we're just gonna do a light sand. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just hitting all the edges. And as you're doing this, you're gonna see it is scuffing it up. It's leaving some marks. The idea behind this is we're just allowing a surface that's gonna let the spray paint bond a little bit better because there'll be dips, divots, areas for the paint to get into and stick a little bit better. And again, we're just going around all the edges here. I am not gonna spray the back side of this just because rocks, things like that are gonna fly up and hit that. It's just gonna chip up the uh, paint easy and I don't wanna have to worry about that. You know, Only thing I wanna worry about is if this bike were to get laid down on its side or something. That's the only way this thing's gonna get scuffed up. Again, we're just doing a quick sand here. And maybe if you happen to already have some scuffs on here, you might wanna drop down, go with a lower number like we were talking about, just to kinda work its way down to that finer finish that we're looking for. So, so far we've had step one, which is disassemble, remove the actual fender. We've got step two, which is gonna be to prep your service. And uh, step two has uh, two different parts. By prep, we wanna sand. We also are gonna to wanna to clean. So even after I do this, I told you cleaning at first didn't matter. And the reason being is after I did this, I know we're gonna actually come around and clean it before we spray it. That looks good. I mean, you can see it's all scuffed up now and that doesn't just wipe right off. You know, that, that's on there. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this clean. I'm gonna go grab a rag, get it wet. Just maybe with a little bit of soap and I'm gonna go over this and just get this cleaned up. So I got a little bit of my dishwash detergent soap on a wet paper towel here and I am just soaping it up. Getting a little bit soapy. You know what, a paper towel is probably the wrong. I would use a cloth, that's my tip. Don't go paper towel as it's gonna leave paper Owl residue behind, but that's okay. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just trying to make a decent video for you guys. 
and girls. Get my dry one, give it another final rub down. And then for the fun part, step three, paint. All right, we got ourselves a nice, clean fender here, slightly scuffed up and ready to get painted. Recap so far. Step one, we used our Allen wrenches. I did use a normal wrench to actually hold one of these bolts while I took the Allen wrench and undid the screws. We've got our sandpaper, and now it's time for the actual paint. All right, time to get creative here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this coat hanger, actually. I was trying to think of something that would work good to suspend it here in my paint studio in the box. And since we got these bolt holes, what I was thinking is we would use this hanger to suspend the actual fender. So there you have it. We have what we're gonna call our uh, redneck paint studio here. We just used a simple metal coat hanger to go through where the uh, bolts normally get put in, which it's basically suspending this while I have this box leaning sideways. If you guys have a big open area, you don't have to go through all this. This is just an easy way, so I'm only gonna have to do coats at a time. I don't have to do multiple spots. I'm gonna be able to put a coat on, wait 10 minutes, do another coat, and so on. And I'm probably gonna apply maybe three, four coats of this spray paint, but I also don't have any spots that won't get painted. Nothing's getting touched, and it's somewhat stable. So the paint hitting it, that pressure, shouldn't get in the way. So let's get going. thing I didn't mention depending on the area that you're doing your spray paint make sure you don't have stuff around it that's gonna get coated I have a fan behind me right here pushing everything to the outside of my garage and I also have a blanket over the front of one of my cars that's closest to the entrance of the garage the box is getting good at just keeping everything down low so anything getting kicked up is just coming right above the box and then the fan carries it out so you guys see my bike behind me here. I'm not worried about it because all my airflow is going this way. But be cautious because spray paint, it's a mist. And when you spray it, it will get on stuff, even if it's a very fine amount. And you know that because like me, being a, a guy with a whole bunch of arm hairs, you, you feel it start to stiffen up a little bit because it's just, it's in the air. So even just on my skin right now, I can feel that somewhat, which leads me to another point. Just to totally make sure you're not getting this on stuff, just double check. Or best recommendation, if it's not windy outside, go do this right outside in the driveway, somewhere maybe right away from your house. Well, you can see it's already looking good. I've done basically three light coats. After this dries, I'm gonna hold it up to the bike, see how I like it, 
And if it's something that I like, I am not looking for a gloss finish. Uh, I am looking for that matte finish. I'm not trying to draw too much attention to the bike. I think it does that enough on its own, as we all know. So I'm gonna go with a clear matte, and that's just to help give it that extra coating of protection. So if rocks, twigs, anything hit it, I'm not having to worry about it getting scratched right away. So those are the products. Once we get this wrapped up, I'll make sure I show you guys what this looks like. I don't need to show you guys how to reassemble it since I showed you how to disassemble it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes. I'm in a really humid, I'm in Florida, it's hot here. I guarantee you this is already pretty dry, uh, even just talking to you guys for five minutes. So I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna end up applying probably two more coats. I just wanna make sure it's on there nice and good and I've covered all the spots. I'm gonna just rinse and repeat that. You guys don't have to stay here for it. I'm gonna end up just showing you guys the finished product. So we finished it up 24 hours ago. We did the spray paint on the rear fender. I just reattached it and I took a quick ride to get to somewhere where I could take a little a bit of video footage and photos where there's not too much distraction in the background like the garage of mine that you guys see. So let's check it out. go out there customize your bike make it your own don't go stealing my gold idea here well you can just don't do it to your Hudson blue I hope you guys enjoyed this simple plastic spray painting tutorial for the super 73 s2 in Hudson blue rock on guys keep riding hard but ride safe thanks <laughs> <laughs>